Hi, welcome back to LaTeX. Today we're going to look at how to create an APA document inside of LaTeX and a lot of the basic features of LaTeX. So let's get started. Now we've already installed LaTeX and Tech Studio, and I'm working in Tech Studio for this video. Now over in Tech Studio, I have said that we are in document class APA. I have begun the document, and I've said there's nothing here, and I ended the document. I did press the two arrows there, and it did create our little document over on the side, which, you know, there's nothing there, so there's really nothing to look at. Let's do that there. So what is APA? Well, APA is a stylistic format used by a lot of schools today, American Psychological Association. And that format requires a lot of stylistic changes for the paper itself and also the references. Now your teacher may be requiring that you use APA format just for the references, or they may be requiring that you use APA format because why not, right? You need to use some kind of format to keep everything consistent, and APA is just one of the formats out there. Now, you could, of course, use Chicago or Harvard or um, Elsevier or Chicago, um, uh, IEEE or anything else or MLA, and we will do a video on MLA shortly. But with APA, it seems to be one of the most common formats out there, so let's go ahead and look at how this is done. In order to do an APA document, there are a couple of packages that are required. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pop some packages in here. And uh, by, by including these in here, you're gonna see a new option inside of LaTeX, a new face of LaTeX here. That is, LaTeX has a lot of functions built into itself. That's just through creating a document, right? You wanna create an article or a document or anything else, we can create sections and subsections and all those neat things. Well, in this, we're gonna to have to go through and create APA. Now, if you wanna see my video on basic LaTeX documents, I will include that in the next section, and that'll include sections and subsections and tables. Uh, in this one, this is just getting your document ready for APA format. So let's go ahead and look at what we have here. So first of all, we have use package. In this case, it is the American Psychological Association. So we're using American for the language there. We are doing, um, trying to keep everything placed inside everything else. So making sure that everything's placed in the right place. We are using style APA, we're sorting sites. We're sorting them by name, year, and oh, I think time, I'm not sure about the T. Uh, the name in year, it's just NYT is what we do. And then backend is Biber. Now, because we are using a backend of Biber on this, you do need to go in two options for Tech Studio. Go to Configure Tech Studio and make sure that under your build, you are choosing default bibliography tool, Biber. So be sure that you're using Biber there. That is probably gonna be BibTech or something else. So you will need to change that or you will have problems. So, or you'll have a bad time. Okay, over here for uh, the general, you can do whatever you want with font sizes. Uh, we can go through and increase that a little bit maybe for this video series. And I'll go ahead and increase the font size a little bit for the video series as well so we can see that a little bit better. <clears throat> okay, so there we go. We've got this and let me stretch this over so we can see it in one page. Now we've got the, uh, the CS quotes. This is a special package that is also required for APA. So just be aware that that will be uh, one of the packages that are in there. Now, some people might say, all you have to do is type APA and start typing. And you would be correct. If you just type APA there and you take this out, it will go through and it will work. It will create an APA document for you. But if you wanna make sure that you got all those little uh, features that your teacher is probably gonna require, they're gonna look for, then you're gonna have to use a couple of packages there. Now, beyond using those packages, I have my normal set, which I can't use the normal set on this because um, I have my normal set of packages that I use, and that is Array, Fancy Verbatim, Graphics, Verbatim, and uh, XURL, which I think that's redundant, actually. <laughs> I always put Verbatim in there, and then Fancy Verb, I think, is redundant with Verbatim. Um, but I've got those options that I include. I also often do Full Page, but if I choose Full Page in this 
LaTeX format, then uh, APA will complain that full page takes it outside of the margins required for the APA format. So I'm going to go ahead and just I'll delete that right there so we can see uh, where we're, well, I'll leave it there. So we can see the document class is APA. We can also go through and uh, put man there, type M-A-N, like that, with APA. And you can import, um, you can put uh, version 7 on this as well. So you can put a 7 after that APA. And uh, that way, you'll have that APA 7 on that format option. And over here it's saying we're missing a whole bunch of stuff for our APA formatted document. Now by default, the newest version of LaTeX does format an APA version 7. So if you just put APA, that is version 7. If you want to use APA 6, just go in, do APA 6, and you can switch over to APA 6. But uh, we are going to type APA 7 just because we're going to be really, uh, really, we're going to stick to it on this one and be very specific to how we make this document. Okay. Uh, let's see, I didn't cover man. Man is the manuscript format. So um, once again, something you probably don't need, but it's something that you might need. So let's go ahead and put it there. Now over here, we've got a couple of options here for begin document. Before we get to begin document, you're probably going to need something like an abstract and a title and other things of that sort. So let me go ahead and pop in a couple of those features and we'll look at each one. So to do that, what we'll have is we'll have the title, a short title, which is a running title that is optional. Pay attention to what your professor or your teacher wants you to do. Uh, the author, and this is going to be your full name. So let's go ahead and put a full name in there. We'll just go ahead and put uh, Jane Doe. We'll do Jane Doe on this one. Your university be uh, uh, La Tech University. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. We'll just try it. And then the last name here, I'm going to put Doe. And the title of the paper, we'll just leave that like it is. And the running title, I'm just going to leave that like it is too. Now over here, the abstract, we've got the abstract of the paper that's also all in what's called the preamble of the document. So. After you define the document class, in fact, this is all preamble. The preamble comes before you start the document. So if I do all this and I say, okay, go ahead and compile that, um, we're going to have a couple of problems with that. Now we do have the running title there, so that's nice. Um, that's there. But we don't have the title or anything else. And that's because there's another option here. Once you start your document, you're going to need to make title like this. And it's, it's rather common sense, right? I mean, it's like, it seems pretty straightforward that you just type make title, but it might not seem straightforward that you need to type that, right? So uh, we have make title there. Now I go create this again. And now you can see that this is already formatted our paper. All we've typed so far is nothing here. All the rest of this. Now, I guess you could say we've typed the title and short title and things like that. This is going to stay very much the same for all of your documents. Your author, affiliation, and left header are going to be the same for all your documents. All of these, your packages and the document class, that's the same for everything you do. The only thing that you're going to need to change, you'll need to change your title and short title. So copy and paste this wherever you go. And of course, you'll need to change the abstract for the paper and you'll need to change the content for your paper. Hmm. All the rest of this, feel free to copy and paste it for every paper that you do. For some of you, I know that some of you are going like, what? This this is formatted my entire paper format? Yes, it has. You got your entire paper formatted. Um, we can give it, uh, I'll, I'll show you using some of LaTeX features. In fact, we'll put Lipsum in here um, as one of the packages. And, um, and I'll go ahead and with Lipsum, I'll generate some abstracts and, and other things like that so we can just kind of see what it looks like. So for the abstract right here where you say abstract of the paper, I'm going to go ahead and, and use that lorem ipsum there. The uh, lorem ipsum I don't think has any real meaning uh, for itself. I think it's just, you know, lorem ipsum. And I'm going to go ahead and pop that in there. I'm going to see if that works. Let's see if that works. and uh, see if it gives us a little paragraph. Yeah, it does. So there's a paragraph, the abstract there. 
And now we can go down and let's say we're doing a research paper and we have a couple of sections. So I'm gonna go through and create some sections. So, or if you don't have any sections, let's say you're not doing a research paper and you don't need an abstract. Okay, well, if, you, if you're not doing that, then let's go, let's go and comment this out. The way we comment text or comment out options in, uh, in LaTeX is we put that little percent in front of there. If you have a long comment, then you can do a slash begin comment like that and then end comment after that comment and that will not show up in your text so we'll get back to that later so over here let's say we have uh, this and we want to go through and we'll do uh, I don't know we'll do eight paragraphs of that ipsum there and let's just see what it looks like so now what we've done is we have this paper and we've had it generate a bunch of paragraphs for us so we can see a whole bunch of paragraphs it's gone through and it's done that for us all right, now let's move on to Research Rabbit. Now this is how we use the paper and this is how everything works. And let's go back to Research. I'm gonna get rid of the lip sum here. So we're gonna get rid of this to get rid of, uh, and we can leave the comment there. We'll go ahead and do our abstract. And I'll just say, uh, this is an abstract. Just like that. And I'll get rid of lip sum right there. And let's go blink there done so we have our abstract and now we're going to research paper well if you're doing a research paper very possibly you're gonna have some sections in there and the section like introduction you might be using MRAD format uh, a section let's see over here methodology like this or a section uh, section right over here MRAD or let's say results and then a uh, section for discussion. We'll just say that way right there. So after we type those in, we got the introduction, methodology, results, and discussion in there. Those are all just sections. I'm gonna hit those double arrows again, and you can see that appeared right there on our paper. Okay, so we've got the basics there. We've got that covered. And now we're gonna to want to do citations. So here we are at the point in the video where we're gonna go re use Research Rabbit, and we're gonna use citations from Research Rabbit in our paper. So let's go ahead and open up Research Rabbit. If you've never used Research Rabbit, now's a good time to uh, start using Research Rabbit. <clears throat> it is an outstanding AI tool uh, for academic research. So let me pull that over here, get the uh, browser here and see if I'm if I get logged in should already be logged in all right we've got research rabbit opened up it is free so go ahead and log in with your Google account or whatever you want to use and I went ahead and created a new collection called demonstration now I'm gonna go through and add some papers to demonstration. What am I gonna look for? I'll look for um, LaTeX document manage, uh, document styles, something like that. Kind of interesting research paper for LaTeX, uh, but there you go. We've got a couple of options here and I'm just doing this to give us an example of, and I'm gonna go ahead and add these to collection. Now these are not papers that I'm, I'm generally interested in, um, but I am just doing this for a demo to show you that you can go through, do a search, you can go through and find the papers that you want here. We can see these different papers. We can kind of see similar works related to these papers. Um, but in this case, we're gonna select all these, take out the comments. I'm gonna choose select all. When I select all, I'm gonna choose export the papers to BibTeX. Now BibTeX, is the reference style. You've probably seen this a thousand times. If you've ever done anything in research or academic publishing, you've seen BibTeX a thousand times. Well, now we're using it. BibTeX is the style used in LaTeX. So now I grab that research rabbit export right there in BibTeX. Let's go back over and we're going to save our document right here in a folder. And in that folder, we're gonna put our references in there with this document. So you remember the way you save the document is you hit the little save button right there. If you want to hit the save as, you can go file save as or hit control alt S or con command option S there for save. I'm gonna save this as demo 0629 
.tex. So I'm going to save that right there. And I've got a folder in this folder right there where I've got my LaTeX demo. So I'm going to go ahead and save this document. And now that I've got this document here, I want to put my research, which, yeah, you know, the documents I downloaded, I just clicked through and selected some from Research Rabbit. If you're doing real research, of course you'll want to go through and do real research and find actual documents that apply to what you're doing. But I'm going to go grab that, uh, that BibTeX file, that's B-I-B-T-E-X, which is going to be a researchrabbit.bib file. I'm going to put that in the same directory where I saved this right here. Now you can see, like, I'm going to copy this right into there, Research Rabbit, and I'm going to rename this file. So that file, I'm not going to leave it that name. I'm going to change the name. So I'm going to type rename. And I'm going to call this references.bib right there. So now I've got my demo file and my references.bib file in that directory. That should be all I have. Now I need to tell Tech Studio right here. How do, how do we actually find those references? How do we reference them, right? So let's look at how to do that. So we already have our, our introduction methodology results discussion. We can go ahead and put some text in there. And uh, hello, this is the intro like this. I'm just putting some text in there so we can see that we actually have text in our document like that. So there we go. Now I'm gonna go through and tell it how to use my references or where to put the references in my document. Now, when we do this, we actually need to tell it that we're going to add a bib resource back in the preamble. So up here under the uh, use packages, just put a couple of carriage returns and we have this add bib resource references.bib. Now, if it's in a different directory, you'll need to put the full directory path there. If it's in the same directory as your LaTeX file, as this file right here, then all you have to do is put the name of the file. Remember, if you're, if you're referencing something in a different directory, then you'll need to put the path there. For instance, C backslash whatever, or in Linux slash home slash user slash document slash whatever, right? Um, in this case, Remember, we put the references file in the same directory as our LaTeX document, so we're all good. Now, just adding that bib resource, that's great. We have to make sure that we do have the option over here for our editor, I'm sorry, for our build to use Biber, that B-I-B-E-R. Make sure that is uh, selected there. I was going to choose OK. All right, and now we want to go down here for a section that is going to be our results. So in that case, we don't need to specify a new section for this. We just need to type, here I'm gonna give a couple of carriage returns, print bibliography, and I'll take the uh, tab out of that just so it's there. So that print bibliography there. Now if I hit this double arrow with the print bibliography, uh, we may have to do it a couple of times for it to acknowledge it and for it to print it properly. So you might have to go through and do this and go through and look to see if it's there and, and do this again. Okay, and so now we've done a print bibliography. Now I don't have anything cited in this right now, so let's see if it did find my bibliography. So I'm gonna say this is the intro. Um, this evidence is great backslash parensite. Now we have to use parensite instead of site. The reason we have to use parensite is because of the APA version seven format. So we see we have a bunch of options with parensite. One is a post note, and I'm going to use a post note just so you can see it. And that post note is gonna be a page. So you do a P dot space, and I'll just say it's on page two, okay? And we can see it's on Brahms 1991, right? Now when I do that, I'm gonna go back over here, I'm gonna hit the compile button, this right here, which is the build and view. I did that, notice it appears right here, which is just great, it has the page on there. I scroll down and look at that. I now have that in my references. It now shows up in my references. 
now some of you might be thinking but i don't actually need to cite them in my paper i just need to show that it's in my references okay that's not entirely appropriate but <laughs> we'll go with it i'll just give you another example really fast and i'll say this is an example of our methodology support and i'm going to do a backslash parent site again parent site that braces and i'll just choose somebody else and i'll say that one right there so i grab that one i put a period at the end oh i should have put a period at the end of this one too period there okay uh period there and i'll hit this right over here build in view if i do that you'll see this pop up and you can see that that come right over the references are in the proper order they are in proper APA format. It is just beautiful, uh, just a wonderful thing. Now, once again, let's say I don't have to actually do parenthetical, uh, or I don't have to do inline citation. I just have to put my references at the end. Okay, if that's the case, what you can do is just type backslash no cite braces, a star right there, asterisk, and close braces just like that and then build and view and when you do that you might have to do it a few times <laughs> unfortunately it looks like it already caught us doing it another way uh, but if you do that no site right there then it will bring up all of your references now it's not right now for whatever reason probably because i went ahead and started doing it the right way uh, so it's not going to do it for us the wrong way. And I'll just give a, this, uh, this is a result example and I'll put backslash. I'll, I'll show you what it looks like if we do site. So I'll just do site over here. If we do a site, then it will not come out in uh, LaTeX format and okay, there we go. Now they all came up and all of our references are now showing because we chose the no site star. Um, if we go up here, this is not correct. If you see that Popelier and Brahms right there, 2004, that is not correct. So what we have to do is put that parent site. So P-A-R-E-N, parent site like that, and then do it. And there we go. Now we've got it in parentheses. It is properly cited. Now, once again, remember if you need to do the um, if you need to do the page number in there, you can also do the page number by just simply putting a bracket, not braces, and then the page dot space whatever page it is, page twelve for instance, and then go ahead and build and view that. We'll see what that looks like, and now you can see page twelve is showing up there. So there you go. If you have any questions on how to format your document there in APA version 7, please let me know. This is LaTeX, APA version 7 formatting the easy way using LaTeX. I hope that it's helped and I look forward to talking to you in future videos.